All right, although I'm not preaching on the Holy Eucharist today, there might be some murmuring out there on this is a hard saying, who can accept it? Um, the idea for this homily really hit me in one moment. I opened it up, the readings last Monday, to just pray over them. And when I noticed something in the second reading, it, it struck me so hard, I said, well, this, this is what I have to talk about. And so you, you, what was this first re- the second reading about? Relationship between man and woman as an image of Christ and the church, right? And it emphasizes in there how the man must love his bride as Christ loves the church, lay down his life for his family. Absolutely true. But usually, when you have a long reading, you have two options. You can have the whole reading or they'll cut out little pieces of it. They had a second option with that same reading, but just a few lines were cut out of that short reading that kind of shocked me. You know what lines they were? I'll read it for you. It'll be awkward for all of us. Wives, because it already talked about what men should be for their wives, but what it cut out is what wives should be for their husbands. Wives should be subordinate to their husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of his wife, just as Christ is head of the church. He himself the savior of the body. As the church is subordinate to Christ, so wives should be subordinate to their husbands in everything. Right now, some of you are murmuring like the Jews in the gospel. This is a hard saying. Who can accept it? Right? But the very fact that they cut that out, that it's a hard saying, and it's something that is not popular in our times, and to try to suppress what the Scriptures tell us, what is the teaching of our faith, and just not talk about it because it is uncomfortable, that's, that is either negligence or even could be on the verge of diabolical. Because when you get relationships wrong, everything else falls with it. And I want to say even before I start this that I love hearing feedback. I love when you talk about what I say. All, all news is good news, as I say. You know, it shows that you're listening, that you're engaged, that you're actually thinking. So if at any point you guys ever disagree with what I say, always know that you can come talk to me. Like, that's really important for me, that, that you know that. But I have to admit, I, I talked to women about this homily for this past week, getting ideas more than I've ever done for any homily in the past. So basically it's just their quotations being given to you. So now that you realize that, if you're triggered, you don't know what to do, do you? Ah, get out of jail free card for me. So the problem is that I run into all the time, and I mean this, is with, with married women and single women who are having difficulties, it's the same complaint across the board. And it's, I want a man I can look up to. I want a man I can follow. I want a man who is a spiritual, material, physical leader, and I'm not seeing them. So number one reason the scriptures say women are to be subordinate to a man is because women don't want to be with a man who they don't deem worthy to be subordinate to. Women want a man they can look up to. The scripture isn't telling you this is what you must be. The scriptures are telling us this is what you are. And I've heard it a hundred times over in my life. If a woman does not perceive her man or the men around her as a leader, someone they can submit to and follow, they would rather remain single or end that relationship than settle into that. I remember the first, this really shocked me because I, I didn't, I never studied relationship dynamics. It wasn't, it's not something you think about a lot in seminary, right? And when I became a priest, that's, it's all over the place, right? And it really hit me this one time when this uh, couple was divorcing. This, this woman was leaving the man. And this happened two different women, the same story in the same month on why they're divorcing their husbands. And the, one of the guys said to me, I don't understand it. Ephesians 5, I love her. I give everything to her. I, she's the most important thing in my life. And then the woman came and talked to me and she said, I can't stand it. He pedestalizes me. He smothers me. He doesn't lead me. I can't trust him. And that was the first time I I was like, I didn't understand that dynamic. 
And I really have been looking into it and studying it, especially the more and more I have young men and women coming to me asking about relationships. And I think it all goes back to Adam and Eve. The way we relate as men and women, especially in our fallenness, we're all broken by sin. We have to understand that. Every, but we're broken in different ways. And when Adam and Eve sinned, when they ate from the tree, Eve was tempted by her own desires, by the snake. Adam was tempted by Eve. Eve went to take control. Adam stepped back and let her lead. Not only did he let her lead, but he bowed his knee to her and ate from the apple from her. So one theologian, he put it this way, that women are tempted by their own desires often. Men are tempted by the desires of the woman that they love. Problem is, women don't understand, like, when a man loves you, like, they love very deeply, to the point that they can pedestalize the woman and obey the woman rather than God. And as soon as a man does that, no woman will respect him. Because the woman wants a man who can follow. And you can't blame Adam. I mean, this is even backed up by science. They did an experiment, found out that 100% of men would accept any kind of fruit from a naked woman. <laughs> it's science, all right? It's just, it's there. But it is the essence of, of, a, of a fallen relationship when the woman, and I'm telling you, I see this all over the place, when a woman is one leading and the man follows. And it does not mean being like an, like an Andrew Tate alpha male. That's not like a real man, all right? A real man lays down his life for the ones he loves, right? He doesn't have a harem of women where he's the top G and, you know, leading. that's not, that's a false masculinity. And that's what the scriptures call men to. You have to build yourself to everything you can be, but then you have to sacrifice it for one woman and for your children. But you get these extremes of, well, I don't want to be a weak, passive man. And so then you get the, the other side of that, that distorts real masculinity. But I do think that we have to look at like, what is truly out there. The fact that we have more single women now, 30 up, childless and not married, than we've ever had in history in the West. That, that, that is a real problem we're facing right now. And one thing that is evident, it's by women's choice. Because women, correct me if I'm wrong, would rather be single then marry a guy who she deems below her. Because then she's going to have to bear five children and raise six. No woman wants to do that. The reason a woman wants a man as a leader, a man who, who she can trust herself to, is that she knows that you'll take care of me and our children. But something we don't realize is because of the sin of Adam, right? Adam, when the temptation came, he was passive. And he stood back. Men don't naturally like to lead. It's hard for men to take the lead. It's much easier for us to sit around, to watch movies, to drink campfires, great times. But if you live that way, you, you, don't, you lose all attractive, all your attractive aspects. Just as it's harder for women because of original sin to let go, to not grasp for control, to not lead. So every single one of us is suffering in this dynamic in our own way. And it's true for priests too. I talk about how the temptation for men is to pedestalize the woman that he loves and just give himself completely to her word. The temptation for priests is to look at their parishioners and preach to their parishioners what they want to hear rather than what God himself commands. Right? And in a sense, when a priest does that, when he's not willing to do the hard sayings of the gospel as Christ himself did today, even at the risk of people getting upset and walking away, in a sense, what you're doing as a priest or as a church is you're putting the voice of people above the voice of God. That's why every single one of us, especially as men, we have this fight to stand up and become worthy of the leadership we're called to. 
So when we're talking about the number of single childless women in this world, what the constant refrain of is, where's all the good men? And some blame it on social media and say, say it's, it's just impossible standards now that we're in like a global sexual marketplace rather than just a small village. Others say, well, it's because men aren't really getting out of their basement anymore. For the first time, again, in history, it's a 60-40% split. 60% of colleges, uh, of college population, are now female. Only 40% male. So the dating pool is completely switched. When it first started, it was, a complete, it was like 75-25, male to female. So men are just, they're checking out right now. And, and it's leaving women with a lot less options on finding the right man that they want to marry. And I think Snow White kind of draws this out, right? If, uh, the story of Snow White is actually a play on a woman going through puberty, coming to see her beauty, and the sufferings that come along with that, right? Because she comes to see she's beautiful, and what happens instantaneous is she's now a victim of, a, of attraction or attack by other men, who desire, and she's now a threat to other beautiful women. And so what does she do? She runs away into the forest, representing she's in a time of confusion. She doesn't know herself. She doesn't know what to do. And then who does she surround herself with? Dwarves. <laughs> Dwarves, which represent men, uh, all, they're fragmentations of masculinity, right? Sleepy, grumpy, happy, dopey, all those, they're, they're fragments of men, but none of them is her prince. They've all been friend zoned, right? So they're, they're there and she likes them and she's doing all the things that a woman would want to do. She's taking care of them. She's keeping up the home. She's making food and all that, you know, but none of them can be her mate. And when she eats from the apple, she goes into that sleep. But part of that sleep represents the unwillingness of the woman to want to settle with any of those men until her prince comes along who can awaken her. And what's interesting is this new Snow White, which is perfect for the narrative of the culture that we're in right now, it, it deletes any idea of a prince. And the constant refrain from uh, the cast is, she doesn't need a man to save her. She does it on her own, right? So the art, the music, the movies, it's always reflective of what's Kind of what's the, the culture, where is, where, it's at, where is it at at this current moment? So for men, it's hard. One woman was asking me after last Mass, well, what does that mean? What are we supposed to do? You know? Well, number one, if you're still single, the most important thing is that Jesus Christ is the most important aspect of your life. That Jesus Christ is the man that you are closest with. In your waiting to find that man, or else it's going to be a lot of other men who come in to take, steal, and destroy. So if you're still single and you're waiting for that, Jesus Christ has to be the most important man in your life. But this is really a call for men more than anything, because it's, it's a condemnation upon us that unless we become absolutely everything that we can become as spiritual, physical, monetary leaders, then you're all going to end up like me as a priest. All right? That's your two choices in life. So use your time wisely. All right? We have to become worthy of that leadership. And I think the greatest temptation, the temptation that hit Adam and Eve and that hits every man and woman, even though we respond to it differently, is a temptation that you're not enough. Right now, there's a lot of temptation that you are not enough to be a leader. And the way that maybe Adam heard that in the garden, you are not enough to take care and protect Eve or to combat the snake. And he took that temptation and he stepped away. He checked out. With Eve, that temptation of you're not enough, you need to have the apple, you need to get more, she grasped in the midst of that. And one woman told me after, I love saying a woman told me this because you guys can't argue at that point. Uh, one woman told me after mass, last mass, she goes, the reason that women feel like we have to do so much right now is because we believe the lie that no man is going to be there to help us. 
So we have to get as much as we can in the world to protect ourselves. So we're all still in our own way fighting with that same lie that you are not enough and how we respond to that. So the last point I want to make is what is the way through this? And I think it really comes down to obedience. Because obedience is the hardest thing for every single one of us, especially with the fear of if I open myself up to obey, to put myself underneath another man, a human instrument, how do I know that you're not going to take advantage of me? How do I know that you have my best interests in mind? Can I remain open to you and not get hurt? Because the flip side of a passive man is a tyrant, someone who subjugates those underneath for his own good. And that's why I say, if you do not have the church, if you don't have Christ and you don't have the church, and as a man, if you are not subjugated to a bishop and to the church, you have no right to ask obedience of anyone around you. Now, I don't believe in that. I, I follow God, not the church. Every Protestant has said that. Now, more and more Catholics are saying that. We as men need to be obedient and subjugated to hierarchy. And only in that way can we trust that the obedience that we demand in the leadership of our family will be blessed by God because we ourselves lay our lives down first. The same thing for a priest. No priest who is disobedient to the church, to the bishop, can ever demand obedience in his own parish. A lot of this comes down to hierarchy. Hierarchy leads to order. We were thrown out of the garden because of disobedience. Christ redeemed us by his obedience on the cross and even unto death. And so it is in our fight and our relationships to be obedient. So to summarize everything in one sentence, especially for those who are dating someone who are married, what can everyone else do in the midst of this? Women, find the man that you've married, that you are with, and tell him the six most holy, romantic, intimate words you can ever say to a man. I trust you to lead us. I trust you to lead us. And men, we must fight every single day for the rest of our lives until we die to become worthy of those words, worthy of the respect of the woman we love and for whom we lay down our life.